Hi everyone, welcome to another edition of Adorn with Dignity. We are on day three and today's entitled Connecting to Hashem. And it states that a person can go through life without being aware of the purpose of his ex existence. The Masel Sisharim teaches us, a person was created for the sole purpose of taking pleasure in his connection to Hashem. Indeed, there is nothing sweeter than cultivating our deep relationship with our dear father. So like many of us know, especially if, if you're a Bali Chuva, you know, um, You've probably been out there, and as many of us have, we've we've been there and we've done that, and you know we've we've chased after materialism, we've chased after kavod, we've chased after all these things, and in the end we still feel kind of empty. Um, and the reason is because it, we're not, the, you know, Hashem has made us, so we have a default setting, which is to connect to Hashem. So whenever we're not doing that, everything is like uh, it, it's every other pleasure. It, it has an expiration. And some expire quicker than others. But when you're connecting to Hashem, that never expires. And that is the pure and, and true joy that, that an Hashem has uh, when it's on this earth. So it says, how do we develop this relationship? Through performing the six constant mitzvot. The mitzvot are called the goal mitzvot since they keep us um, since they help us fulfill the purpose of all other 607 mitzvot to come closer to Hashem. So what are the six constant mitzvot? So it says, uh, they are, know that Hashem is your God. Know that there's only one Hashem. You should not have other gods. Love Hashem. Fear Hashem. You should not stray after your own, uh, after your heart and your eyes. Um, so it says, benefits of fulfilling the six constant mitzvot. Through fulfilling the six constant mitzvot, we cultivate the connection to Hashem, which we will determine to love our connection to Him in the world to come. So now, again, um, if you followed, uh, if you're following Paleoets, you heard me say, uh, you heard me mention, you heard me bring up the last Gilgul. And I had told you, and a lot of people say, you know, you have so much fire, you have so much this. And, and part of that is the, is the understanding and realization that this really may be my last Gilgul. And it may be yours too. And if that doesn't scare you, I don't know what will, Habibi. Because let me tell you, there may not be another chance to do Torah and Mitzvot. You know, there's that's it we're in the end of time already okay we are in the end of time so that means that not only we may not have any time but think about it you know how like we do all these shears Layla nishmat for this nishama and that nishama who's going to be doing it for us because if the if, if the time ends and mashiach comes then what so you know i think that all these mitzvot that have been hard for us to do i think this is the time for us to say that I, I need to want to come closer to Hashem more than I have a need to uh, be accepted in everyone else's eyes. Um, and I think that really becomes the driving force behind uh, the, the koyach needed to, to get what we have to get done. Um, and you'll find that after, uh, you know, a tangle or two at the rodeo with the Yetzirah and this, especially in this issue for women, you'll find that it goes away and you don't even notice it anymore. Um, all the uncomfortable feelings that you think you're going to have, uh, maybe you'll have them once or twice, and after that, you know, it's done. It's a done deal. Um, but it says that since Hashem is completely spiritual, we can only cultivate relationship with Him through detaching ourselves from materialism and continuously filling our minds and hearts uh, with spiritual thoughts and feelings because we live in a world where we're surrounded by lures of technology and materialism on a constant basis. We need to constantly strengthen ourselves to disconnect from uh, these unfulfilling pursuits so that we can bond with our dear father. Um, so, you know, it's a well-known thing that if you are attaching yourself to material things, in other words, physical things. Uh, so for for myself, you know, my my I would attach to, uh, you know, fashions and and, uh, you know, privilege and, uh, you know, uh, financial success. The more that I attach to that, the less I'm attached to Hashem. You know, you have to think of it like a pot of water. And if your pot is already filled, what room is there for Hashem, right? And it's vice versa. The stronger you are to connect it to Hashem, all these other things don't matter to you. And you'll find, you'll, you can find people who, and you'll see it, we know, I'm, all of us know somebody who... You know, there's a lot of times it almost seems, not that they look disheveled or anything, but their mind is just not, you know, on, on uh, materialistic things. And those people tend to be the, the tzaddikim of the world because they, they don't care about, you know, I need to have the newest furniture all the time, the newest car. They're, 
they, they're very happy living a simple life. This is why, again, if you're following Pelouettes, um, this is why you, you, you need so much uh, emunah to live in Eretz Israel because you have to be able to live a very simple life. Uh, one that is truly connecting to Hashem because you are you are living on Emunah. I mean, it, it takes such Eretz Israel is such a land of of uh, of great miracles every day. And if you don't have the Emunah, it, it really it becomes a very difficult life. So it says, only in this world do we have the wondrous opportunity to develop a close relationship with Hashem. Let us take advantage of this awesome opportunity. So it says, obstacles to the six constant mitzvot. The Yitzhara is well aware of the great benefits of these mitzvot, and they are the catalyst for accomplishing our goal in life. Moreover, or moreover, they will help us fulfill the purpose of all other mitzvot. Therefore, he tries his utmost to place obstacles in our path in order to prevent us from performing them. He tries to convince us that we are too busy to direct our thoughts to carry out these fun fundamental mitzvot. In truth, we can fulfill these mitzvot throughout the day, especially when we're performing daily chores, washing dishes, folding laundry, eating, walking, etc. And he says, when we practice these mitzvot on a constant basis, they will become part of our natural thought process. This will lead us to the most beautiful place in the world, a life of closeness to Hashem. That is the epitome of bliss, fulfillment, and true happiness. Indeed, when one learns to drive a car, it seems that there are so many things to concentrate on. Yet, after drive, driving for a few months, it becomes second nature to drive, and the driver uh, can even focus on other matters while he's driving. So too, at first, it may seem overwhelming to concentrate on six consummates vote while we're performing our daily uh, chores. Yet, once we become accustomed to contemplating these ideas, it will become second nature to us. In the upcoming lessons, we will expound upon these mitzvot and discuss some of the Yitzhara's tactics so it will, uh, we can learn how to overcome him. So it says, the key to our uh, closeness to our Creator, and we're closing. And it says, in life, we are constantly confronted with thousands of choices. Inevitably, we often uh, are often confused as to what is the correct thing to do, say, or think. And I think that's especially true in this day and age, uh, when we are such, we are ourselves are at a very low level, and the uh, the tuma in the world is very strong, and everything it's an upside down world, literally. And it it almost seems like it is almost. It almost seems impossible to know what the right path is unless you're clinging to Hashem. This is why this becomes so key. So it says there's a simple solution to our inner turmoil and indecision. We can constantly ask ourselves, will this thought, action, speech bring me closer to or further away from Hashem? And this, I'm sorry, is this my neshama talking or is it the Yitzhara? Uh, through analyzing this and making the right decision, we will constantly be surrounded by the sweetest and most elevating aura in the world. And that's the feeling of true closeness to Hashem. So like I said, you know, because it is so difficult to, you know, with the Tumah being so strong and our level being so low, the best way uh, is to, you know, you when you have these thoughts in your mind, you have to, you have to put them through the test, as it were. And, and the test is the Torah. Now, if you're not... Um, if you're not studying Torah, if you've not studied the sages who broke it down um, into everyday terms and for living, then this is going to become a great problem for you. This is why, um, if you are not uh, studying, if uh, your if your husband's not studying, if you're not studying, this becomes an issue. It really becomes an issue because you don't know what the true path is. And you know, there's there's a famous saying that life doesn't come with a handbook, but I tend to disagree. I think that it does come with a handbook. Not only does it come with a handbook, but in case it was like one of those books that, you know, you say it's all Greek to me, that's where the sages come in and they kind of tell you, they break it down into, into the simplest terms uh, for your day-to-day -day life. Um, and so this is why Hashem has given over authority to the sages who, you know, these, are, these aren't just... Uh, you know, somebody who decided to read a book and give a shear on it. I mean, these people were really holding close to Hashem. Uh, so I, I really I have to tell you, when you're building that relationship with the sages, uh, it becomes much easier to, to take uh, their advice, no matter how hard it is. Um, but, uh, you know, we can, uh, we can do it. We can, get, we can get through this life and accomplish what we have to accomplish. And if you're a woman... The, you know, the mitzvot of Kisurosh is, is one of the hardest for women. Um, and I think that there has to be some kind of support system for everyone that's doing this. And, and if you're not in a place where you're ready to do it, then, then you have to also, you know, you have to pipe down. You can't bash another woman 
one way or the other. You know, if you're wearing the tichel, you cannot bash the woman with the shaitel. If you're wearing the shaitel, you cannot bash the woman with the tichel. Everyone is at their level, but it all has to be a support. That's it. It cannot be this, you know, uh, us against them or what. This has to be, we have to be unified. And again, if, you, if you're if following the Peleuets and you, and you go back to the, the chapter on unity, you will see that if you're unified, it is impossible. It's, 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 it's impossible for anything to, to come against us. We have to be unified in this. And there, there is no ifs, ands, or, or buts about it. Um, so, you know, we're going to get into it and it's going to get deeper again. It's just, uh, it's giving us a nice foundation. So it seems like it's going a little slow, but trust me, trust me, you'll be holding on to your tickles and your shaitel soon enough, girl. So, um, but that's it for today. And I hope we'll all be together again soon. Besarat Hashem.